We'll give it just a moment, ladies and gentlemen, before we begin this transmission. Okay, looks like we're live. All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. On the face of this plane, under the firmament, where our God reigns and rules in righteousness, and his son, Jesus Christ, leads the way to victory over sin and death, who has the power to cast the soul into hell, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Joe Embriano. Today is Thursday, January 26th, 2023. My contact information is the Fullerton Informer.com, Joe Embriano777 at gmail.com, 5GDangers.com, VaxDangers.com, CellTowerDangers.com, and of course, P.O. Box 4121, Fullerton, California, 92834. All right, so today is going to be a, a topic that, uh, you know, I've been mulling this around for a while, and quite frankly, uh, I'm really getting sick of it really coming home to roost with respect to everyone in my family and everybody I know is having to deal with this, okay? Wherever you are in the country, uh, there's a good chance that there's these homeless drug addicts roaming the streets and terrorizing people. Now, before you guys get mad at me and say I don't have any sympathy, you know, look, years ago when the Fullerton police brutally murdered a homeless man named Kelly Thomas, I was one of the most outspoken critics of how the police department handled the murder of that innocent man. But we're in a different paradigm right now with respect to the homeless folks. The homeless are being used. The homeless population is exploding for several reasons, and it's all by design, and it's all being caused directly by the government, okay? Now, the first reason so many people are on the streets is inflation. The government continues to allow a private central bank run by the deniers of Jesus Christ, called the Federal Reserve, to coin our money, which is against the law, it's unconstitutional, and uh, nonetheless it's happening because everybody that goes to Congress is a criminal that has been bankrolled by the deniers of Jesus Christ to make sure that this issue is never dealt with. But the problem with printing money out of thin air is that it gets more and more worthless over time, and things that are in finite supply become commoditized, i.e. Uh, precious metals, a housing, uh, durable goods, equipment, machinery, things that are in limited supply, and eventually food, folks. And so what happens is people end up on the streets because they cannot afford to live and pay rent or buy a home. Now, if this is being coupled with the problem of unemployment, which is being caused directly by the communist, Bolshevik, uh, Marxist, uh, uh, Trotskyite, destruction of capitalism and free enterprise in the United States by the treasonous trade deals, the uh, wicked economic policies of the lockdowns and, uh, you know, the antitrust uh, lawsuits and the deregulation of industries and the overall manipulation of interest rates that's driving businesses out of business. The taxes are driving businesses out of business. And then the automation is stepping in to solve the, the margin uh, thinning problem. So that puts people out of work. Now, couple this with another problem, the war on the, the government's own doing as they make sure that the drugs keep flowing. And, you know, the medical system keeps creating more and more wicked medications. And through the use of uh, weaponized medicine, even dentistry and psychiatry, and I mean, they were handing out opioid pain medications for migraines, ladies and gentlemen. And, and so we got all these people that are hopped up on opioids, and now they're hopped up on synthetic opioids, and now they're mixing it all up with meth and, uh, you know, Adderall and, and everything else. And, and, and so, folks, people are down on their luck, out on the streets, and they're getting jacked up on malt liquor and cocktails and drugs, okay? And so at the same time, 
the government is emptying out the mental institutions, closing down the mental hospitals, and then throwing, you know, billions of dollars at the homeless problem. And then, at the same time, they're decriminalizing crime and emptying the jails as they allow the borders to remain open and hand out uh, free housing, uh, food cards, stimulus payments, health care, dental care, uh, legal services, sex changes to anyone that wants to come over here with a fake ID, regardless of their criminal history. And so you have this intentional flooding the deck, so to speak, with all of these people that are either criminals or criminally insane or mentally insane or insane from drug addiction or down on their luck from economic depression, psychologically depressed, uh, sociologically, uh, you know, just downtrodden. And they're all out on the streets, folks. And the government wants this problem to get so bad that all of you start screaming and pleading for the government to lock these people up and put them somewhere, like in a camp somewhere, okay? All right? Now, that is uh, what is going on. Because they want to be able to use the Health Powers Act and, uh, you know, Perez Patrie and all these issues where uh, psychiatry uh, it has a preeminent uh, position over individual rights, the diagnoses of a medical doctor from a psychiatric standpoint supersedes individual rights. And they want to eventually have a situation where they can deem somebody mentally ill or a threat to themselves or others so they can intern them or forcibly medicate them or drug them or hold them indefinitely. This is where this is going, folks. You see, mental illness is a very subjective term that continues to have a definition that subjectively continues an expansion to broaden the net, so to speak, to reel in more victims into the system. And eventually... The people that either refuse to get vaccinated or don't believe in these uh, contagion uh, allegations or believe in virology or epidemiology or believe or people that, that don't believe in the germ theory. In other words, people that question the medical narrative will be deemed a threat to public health. Okay? Now... Once they have established that and codified that, which they've already done in some instances, uh, but the, the legislation has not been enacted, either the governors haven't signed it, or they only kick in during emergency declarations, where in some cases they're actually in place right now. But in a broad scale, the most they can hold you for is 72 hours against your will. Okay? That's a psych hold they can put on you. 5150. Okay? After that, they got to let you out unless you're a, a clear present danger to others. Now, if you watch all these movies, which are really the truth about what they're going to do to us, you will be mentally ill if you refuse the vaccine. You will be mentally ill if you, if you refuse to believe that the viruses are real. You will be mentally ill if you refuse to take a test that will determine whether you're so-called infected or not. And you will be deemed a threat to public health and a threat to yourself and a threat to others. And you will be taken to a facility and dealt with. Now, that is why they are turning these closed military bases uh, into medical, uh, biological facilities. They have a lot of land. They're really close to the railroad tracks. They have a landing field, landing strip for aircraft and helicopters. And a lot of these military bases are smack dab in the middle of uh, metropolitan areas. I mean, no matter where you go throughout the country, and I remember many years ago, my wife and I traveled around in 
we just couldn't seem to get away from the military bases. Everywhere we went, there they were, right next to the railroad tracks. And, uh, you know, they got it all set up, folks. So they have plans for you. And that's why they're allowing this homeless problem to get so bad, you know, that some guy's going to go psycho on your wife while she's walking out of the grocery store. And, you know, I mean, some of these guys will just walk up to you and slit your throat while you're sitting down in a restaurant for no reason. Just, just look at what happens with these people. By and large, these people are victims, folks. They're victims of the petrochemical pill-pushing pimps that have invented these wicked, evil, addictive drugs. They're victims of the commoditization of the basic necessities of survival, putting everything out of reach for these people in terms of their ability to afford a stable environment to lay their head on and, and sleep and be productive. Because they're all jacked up on drugs, they can't get their heads straight, and they're broke. And they don't want help because they're afraid of people. They don't want to get locked up. And to be honest with you, I don't blame them. Instinctively, they still have their wits about them to some extent. They don't want to be put in some place they can't get out of. And who does, right? So, if you understand why the homeless problem is getting so bad, they're making it bad on purpose. Okay? The government... And the public health authorities and the media and the uh, economic uh, magnates, if you will, the titans of industry, uh, the people that are involved in, in our, our financial uh, infrastructure, the Treasury Department, all of these uh, you know, alphabet agencies that are supposed to be responsible for controlling the narcotics coming into the country. Uh, the judiciary with the light sentences, the district attorneys that are letting people off the hook, they're getting out of uh, out of jail with no bail after getting caught with 300,000 fentanyl pills in their car. And they get out in the morning and don't even have to post bail because they say they don't have any money. I mean, we've got a, a systematic communist Bolshevik takedown of the United States that's flooding the streets with uh, drugged out zombie homeless people that are violent and most of them uh, are, are not themselves and they are a threat and folks I'm not minimizing how dangerous these people are I'm just telling you being used and they are being forced multiplied they are being literally bred the homeless epidemic by design is being allowed to continue okay they're going to be allowed to continue to terrorize people ruin businesses until you get mad enough to say, lock these people up, take them off the streets. you got to understand that grabbing people off the streets for no reason other than a subjective determination of one's opinion, of one's state of mind, is a very, very slippery slope for the United States of America. And they're forcing all of us to just throw our hands up in the air and scream, enough is enough, take these people away. Here's the problem. Eventually, it'll be you and I. People that own guns will be considered mentally ill. People that believe that the government is conspiring to do things to us will be deemed mentally ill. People that don't believe in the fraud of medicine will be deemed mentally ill. People that question the shape of the earth will be mentally ill. People that believe in Jesus Christ will be deemed mentally ill. People that don't believe in vaccinations will be deemed mentally ill. And that's why they're emptying out the jails, folks, because they're going to need the rooms for us. Okay? Now, What do we do about this? Well, I'll tell you the two things that we do. All right? It's very simple. We never advocate for taking people and interning them for any reason. We fight that tooth and nail. We don't support those policies. And we make it impossible for them to do it to us by having the first and last right of refusal. We don't give up our right to bear arms. Now, there's a radio station in Southern California called KFI, 
And this is a propaganda outlet run by the deniers of Jesus Christ that pushes all of the agendas. Okay, It pushes uh, vaccinations. It pushes uh, the existence of viruses. It pushes the validity and uh, preeminence of the medical system. It pushes the need for people to be drugged against their will and taken away against their will. It pushes for gun control. Uh, it pushes for the evisceration of family values. Uh, they mock Jesus Christ and Christianity. And, uh, you know, they'll have a, a little conservative flavor in the afternoon, but then they'll have this guy in the morning that makes fun of people that believe in Jesus. Uh, but the, the ultimate goal of this radio station is to make sure that people never figure out what's going on. And they're an integral part of the system. They'll tell you how bad the homeless problem is. They'll highlight all the problems the homeless are creating. They'll get you pissed off about how much money the government is taking from your taxes and spending on the problem. And they'll keep your eye focused on the problem to get you to say, hey, enough's enough. Yeah, I agree with you. Let's lock these people up. But one of the things they were talking about yesterday, someone brought to my attention, and I found the transcript, and I've, I've downloaded it, is they were making statements about how, and this is very important because they were talking about these so-called or alleged mass shootings uh, that allegedly took place in California recently. And they were saying that 50% of the guns in the United States are owned by 3% of the population. Now, number one, <clears throat> excuse me, let me take a little sip of my water. Number one, that statistic is a lie. Now, why are they doing this? Well, because they want to marginalize gun owners and make them think they're in the minority so that people will build momentum and uh, feel confident in being outspoken against gun owners and get people to feel like they're in the majority by going along with the government propaganda to demonize gun owners and eventually get people in a position to where they're going to rat off their neighbors for any reason and use the red flag laws to take their guns away or elect people that will take the guns away or pass more restrictions on ammunition purchases, more background checks. I mean, folks, California has the most restrictive gun laws in the nation. And, you know, supposedly we've got the biggest problem uh, with these alleged uh, gun violence episodes. But, you know, folks, what I'm trying to get at here is there's a very uh, widespread concerted effort to demonize law-abiding men and women in this country who have a God-given right, according to the Gospel of Luke in the Bible, and according to the Second Amendment. And, and, and our government in California, Governor Newsom, has stated on record publicly that the Second Amendment is a suicide pact. In other words, he's saying that it's, you know, it's just we hang on to the Second Amendment and, uh, you know, we're all going to die, right? We're all going to commit suicide. No, we're not. The Second Amendment is the reason why you don't have a, a full-scale China model in the United States where the government locks people in their homes, welds the door shut for months, and puts you on a social credit score, shuts off your ability to buy things and uh, forces you to st stick a swab up your nose three times a day. Uh, we have rights here, folks. We have the right to say no. The government is in a position to where they have to keep things calm and they don't want the American people snapping and going off. And so, you know, what they're doing is they're trying to demonize gun owners, making them seem like they're the minority, that everyone that has a gun is a nut, that people that have more than one guns are crazy, and, you know, that's the implication with these talk show hosts on this radio station and many other stations across the country because they serve their master, who is Satan, okay? These radio stations are not controlled by people who follow Jesus Christ. They are not controlled by people who love the United States. They are controlled and owned by people who want to fold the United States into a stas, a state, a stasi, uh, quasi uh, uh, Marxist, Bolshevik, tyrannical, uh, 
butcher shop to get rid of everybody, folks. And they do it through pushing all these different agendas while acting like they're reporting the news, acting like they're journalists, acting like they're your friends. But it, 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 the reality is the jails are being emptied because they're going to put law-abiding people in them that won't get vaccinated or won't turn in their guns. So they're drawing the line in the sand, but they're not telling you about this line in the sand yet, but I am. They've closed the mental institutions and flooded the streets with all of these uh, mental, these mentally ill people. And uh, all of these druggies are, uh, you know, proliferating because they're just giving up on life because, you know, and by the way, they're giving them all cell phones so they can contact trace everybody so they know where to get you. I mean, you, you know, they're, they're literally giving away smartphones. I drive by some parts of uh, Anaheim and there's four different companies with tents on the sidewalk trying to sign these guys up for cell phones, right? But yet I remember when I was standing on the sidewalk uh, protesting what they were doing to the children in the schools, the police came and told me, get off the sidewalk, right? Here I am trying to protect children and the cops are trying to get me off the sidewalk and I refused to leave and I also told uh, the fat pig disgusting cop that tried to make me take my signs down to get his filthy hands off of my sign. And he left. Oh yeah, and then they sent the traffic manager out. That didn't work. The cops didn't work. It, 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 they sent the traffic manager of the city of Florida out. He gave me some nonsense. I told him to get lost and pound sand too. But my point is, folks, the, the reality is this is a setup, okay? And don't you ever start calling for the wide-scale wholesale locking of people up just based on their appearance uh, or their actions to some extent. You cannot just start grabbing people off the street and taking them away. Because once that happens, you're next. Everyone's next, folks. And don't kid yourself. They have all of these facilities connected by rail lines to hold large numbers of people and do things to them against their will. But they can only succeed if you allow them. Do I make myself clear, ladies and gentlemen? Am I making myself clear on this? Now, in the meantime, because the government wants the homeless people to be jumping in front of your car and crack, cracking your window and smashing your hood, uh, you need to carry stuff in your car, like, you know, something that can disable these people. Make sure you check the laws about what's legal to carry in your car. I mean, there, there are many things you can carry in your car, and you can aim it right in their eyes, okay? Say, like, you know, hi there, boom, 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 boom. hold your breath, knock, knock open the door, and then take your knife out, right? If you're getting attacked... Uh, you have the right to pr defend yourself, okay? Uh, there's a lot of things. And by the way, a lot of these homeless guys, they carry knives. You should carry knives too. And, uh, you know, a lot of these homeless guys, they're harmless. So just stay away from them. Don't provoke them. Don't give them money. Just don't deal with them. But don't call for the wholesale incarceration of an entire homeless population. Because then they'll come for you. They'll come for the vaccine refusers. They'll come for the Christian scientists. They'll come for the Muslims. They'll come for the Seventh-day Adventists. They'll come for the faith healers. They'll come for the test refusers. They'll come for the flat earthers. And they'll say all of these people are mentally ill and need to be interned and locked up because they're a threat to themselves, a threat to others, and a threat to the public. The only thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen, is say, hell no, we won't go. And draw your line in the sand. This is your host, Joe Embriano, the Fullerton. I was cut off there for a second. I just want to let you know, folks, that I am coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I am coming to you in the name of truth. I am coming to you in the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. 
and we are sovereign beings created in God's image, and no one has a right to lock us in a cage and torture us or inject us or kill us, okay? No one. And if someone tries to do that, you have every right to stop it and defend yourself, all right? All right, folks, you need to understand that things are rolling according to plan. Nothing is an accident, although you scratch your head and you wonder why these politicians are so inept that they're so lame and they can't get the problem solved. They have all this money. They declare all these emergencies and they can't solve these problems. It's because, folks, you can build all the homeless housing you want. You can have all the homeless problems you want. But if the fentanyl's falling out of the sky like snow uh, in the Sierras in December, it ain't going to solve anything because these people are going to stay jacked up and out of their minds and going from high to low looking for their next fix, and they don't care how they get it. And it doesn't matter whether you have a bed and breakfast with gold-plated tea teaware. It ain't going to matter to go in there they want to stay on the streets and stay jacked up okay that's all they do but that doesn't mean we give up our rights because the government is creating a problem it's problem reaction solution or that chaos right? take care folks